At this point, I've pretty much explored almost every aspect of coffee. But there's still one last thing I want to explore as our final wrap up of our series. In our usual quest to basically force myself to learn to appreciate everyday items, I traveled all the way to Mexico to make my own cup of coffee, starting from the tree. Using the usual method I used to calculate my total cost, for this cup of coffee, it cost me around $1,500. The actual labor involved in processing the beans for a single cup of coffee was actually pretty small, in total around eight hours. So the bulk of the expense was mostly just having to get there, which coming from the flatness and the coldest of the Midwest was definitely a necessity. However, I didn't actually grow the tree myself as it takes three to four years. But if I had been able to stay in Mexico for the full growing season and been involved in the actual weekly maintenance of the tree I harvested, it probably add an extra 52 hours, about an hour a week, raising the price to a little over $1,900 then. So what does this number mean? It's mostly just telling you the price of a ticket to Mexico which definitely illustrates the difficulties you'd face without today's modern infrastructure and trade network for an international commodity like coffee. But it's also worth mentioning that I calculated the value of labor using the Minnesota state minimum wage of $7.75 an hour. Over in Mexico, the minimum wage is around $4.30 a day. This economic disparity is definitely a factor in how cheap we can get our coffee. So now that I've met some of the coffee farmers one-on-one, -on -one, like Froleon, who gave me this awesome hat, and heard their struggles, it left me curious. When I buy a cup of coffee, how much of that actually makes it back to the original coffee farmer? So I turned to Wendover Productions for some help with this economics question. On average, a 16 ounce cup of coffee in the United States costs $2.70. Obviously the numbers can vary widely from shop to shop, but I'm gonna give you a rough approximation of the cost breakdown. From the $2.70 you hand the barista for your cup of coffee, the material costs such as the cup, lid, sugar, etc. account for around 27 cents. About 45 cents of your payment goes towards paying the salary of everyone at the coffee shop, while 79 cents goes for paying general operational costs of the shop such as rent, utilities, advertising, taxes, etc. 32 cents goes towards actual profit for the business. That leaves around 87 cents to actually spend on the coffee beans. However, by the time a coffee shop is buying their beans, they've already changed hands several times from farmer to exporter to importer and then finally to roaster. Each middleman charges a bit more so that they can make a profit. Backtracking from the coffee shop, the first step is the roaster, who is likely to charge around 58 cents markup for the shipping and handling of beans, as well as the operational and salary costs of roasting the beans themselves. The roaster would get their beans from a coffee importer, who handles the international shipping importing fees for bulk sales of beans. Around 13 cents of our initial payment will end up going to them to cover their expenses. A coffee importer will usually receive their coffee from exporters at the origin country. They usually charge around 10% for their services to the farmer, which means they'll receive 2 cents from us. That leaves around 14 cents for the farmer, which is actually a pretty generous rate. At the moment, the current commodities market values coffee at around $1.49 per pound, but how much a farmer actually makes is widely variant to the deals he has with his co-op, exporters, and importers. If they're lucky, farmers can strike a direct deal with buyers and negotiate a better rate. For example, Starbucks supposedly pays double the commodities price to the farmers that they have contracts with. Others sometimes face less ideal situations. At 14 cents from our cup of coffee, this is assuming that the farmer is receiving double the commodity rate. If they were paid the fair trade minimum, it'd be 11 cents. And if they were paid the market value, they'd receive only 7 cents. With only that amount of money going to the farmer, that means only around 3-5% to of your initial coffee purchase actually makes it back to the original coffee farmer. And even then, there are extra middlemen that the farmers could be forced to go through that could cut that amount in half. Obviously, there's a lot of value that's added along the way as it goes through various steps before it goes from green coffee beans on the remote village on the side of a mountain all the way to your cup of coffee in your home. As you can see from my crude experiment in making it from scratch, just getting the beans to my kitchen back home ended up being the majority of my costs. Coffee farmers overall end up being some of the worst treated in the world. They end up taking on the majority of the risks with very small profits. A bad crop or a drop in price can easily ruin the farmers. The average coffee farmer has two hectares of land, yielding around 4,000 pounds of green coffee a year, or about 85,000 cups. Meaning at those rates, an average coffee farmer might have 6,000 to 12,000 yearly revenue. After subtracting the cost of production, which can vary widely, that means somewhere around 1,200 to 7,200 total income per year for what is usually an entire family working the farm. And that is still being fairly optimistic, as some reports say coffee farmers make as little as $500 to $1,000 a year for the coffee. With the average income of Mexico being around $10,000 a year, 
That puts them pretty low on the economic ladder. So what can you do about it? How can you best give farmers their fair share? There are a variety of different organizations that are attempting to remedy it through different methods, such as fair trade, probably the most commonly known. I'll let Noah from Cafe Imports describe it. That means that a group of producers have joined together in what's called an association or a cooperative. Mm -hmm. um, and then those producers collectively uh, both charge a premium, so we pay a premium, that is then decided democratically how to be dispersed within the community. So they can do things like um, build new infrastructure needs, um, invest in potentially new varieties of coffee. Um, any number of things that basically they decide as a group they want to spend that money on is, is kind of where that premium goes. Fair trade, however, has some criticisms. Some claim less money actually ends up reaching the farmers, as the cooperatives can eat up the extra money meeting fair trade political standards. And fair trade buyers can pocket some of the premium pricing. Some argue that the premiums don't go far enough and only give a small amount over standard market price, where much more is needed. Noah also explained another approach that Cafe Imports takes to ensure that they pay their farmers a fair and sustainable rate. The majority of the coffee that we have, which is not fair trade certified, um, we're paying quality premiums for. So we're paying premiums above where the coffee market's at to incentivize essentially a higher quality production of coffee. And the same is true with the fair trade coffee that we have. We're never just buying coffee because it's fair trade certified. It's fair trade certified plus it's also delicious. So usually we're paying premiums above and beyond even that fair trade premium for their coffee. Anytime that you're dealing in a trade that crosses you know, many different cultural lines and is typically grown in poor rural areas, there's gonna be opportunities for corruption. Um, for people to not be paid fairly for their product. Um, in our world, in the high-end specialty world, usually there's us and 10 other people that are all trying to buy the same coffee. So ultimately, they're selling that coffee to the best partner for them long-term. Um, and the fact that we're buying their, their best coffee also puts us in a good position um, to be able to compensate them fairly because they, they're gonna make what they wanna make. Another method used is direct trade which is a method used by some roasters to cut out some of the middlemen and buy their beans directly from the farmers and make sure they receive a larger cut of the profits. Another option is what's done by Thrive Farmers Coffee, an organization taking yet another approach, where their profits gained later and the trade of the coffee is shared back with the original farmers. Instead of being paid for the green coffee beans, they aren't paid until after it's been roasted, exported, packaged, and sold. The markup added at these steps is then split 50-50 with the farmer, and supposedly can yield four times as much money as fair trade for the farmers. The downside of this structure is that farmers don't get paid until later, and they end up taking on additional risks. With the thin profits of farming coffee, that can leave them short on money for the next year's crop. Fair trade and other ethical considerations is not something I've honestly really taken the time to consider in the past. But now, after meeting farmers like Frolion and learning how little they can get paid, it's definitely something I want to be more mindful about in the future. Thanks to Windover Productions for his help with this video. Be sure to check out his channel for other great videos covering travel, economics, geography, marketing, and more. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out the full video where I attempt to make a cup of coffee entirely from scratch. But if you have already seen it, you may be getting as sick of coffee as I am. But good news, we're moving on to a new subject in a couple days. Hard cider. Another beverage. By everything, we really mean just drinks. It's how to, how to make drinks. We're also starting a new Audible partnership we'll be using to recommend some books relative to the topics we cover in future episodes. But for now, if you haven't yet, try a free 30-day trial membership of Audible on the link below.